Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dom and today we are checking out the top 10 features in iOS 8. Now, of course, there are more than 10 features available with iOS 8, but I can't cover them all in one video, so I decided to pick my top 10 favorites and share them with you. And be sure to check out the links down below for continuing coverage on iOS 8. And if you're not already, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. But let's go ahead and dive right into the top 10 features of iOS 8. So first off, we are checking out one of my personal favorite features, which is quick reply or interactive notifications. This will allow you to quickly reply to text messages or iMessages and also calendar events and like things on Facebook, basically anything that has integration with the interactive notifications here. And they all work from the lock screen as well. So as you can see, I can swipe over and quickly reply to this incoming message right here. Now there is another way to do this. And if we hop into the settings app into notification settings for messages, is, we can change the pop-up style to alert and that will give us something that looks a little similar to Byte SMS. If you guys have ever used that, you can tap on the reply button here and have this little pop-up box right here where you can reply to the message directly from wherever you're at in iOS and it's going to depend on which one you prefer. Now moving along here, we are going to hop into the messages app and take a look at some of the new features available in here and the first one we are going to check out is tap to talk and that's that little microphone down there in the bottom corner so let's go ahead and raise this a little higher so you can see it better but if we tap and hold on that little microphone we can record an audio message and then quickly send it off with a swipe upward like that and then the other person on the other end can listen to it in line within the messages app now along with that we do have the ability to do the same exact thing with videos so if we tap and hold on the camera swipe over to the right we can start recording a video just like that and you can even flip over the camera if you'd like and then when you're done you can go ahead and swipe up and send it off just like that. So it's pretty simple and pretty cool, a nice way to share audio and video with your friends inside of the Messages app. Now if we go into the Details tab right here, another cool feature that we have is Do Not Disturb. So you can enable Do Not Disturb on a per thread level and you can have specific threads silenced over other ones. So if somebody's annoying you, maybe you can go ahead and silence that thread and not have to deal with them for the rest of the day. Coming up next here, we are checking checking out a useful feature within the mail app and this will just allow you to manage your messages a little bit better with swipes. So if we do a short swipe across this message here you can see we have the ability to trash the message, flag it, and see more options. And if we long swipe across that message we can completely delete it. So nothing special here but just some quick little handy features that might make life a little easier for you inside of the mail app on iOS 8. Now as I pointed out in a previous video we have spotlight suggestions in iOS 8, which are great features to have. So spotlight suggestions are basically what they sound like. When you type something into Spotlight, it will suggest certain items based on what you've typed. So as you can see here, I typed in Hang O and it's putting Hangouts on there from the App Store. Or if I type in Dr. Dre, it's going to bring up a Wikipedia listing here for Dr. Dre. Basically things like that. We can find movie results, music results, everything in real time right inside of Spotlight, which actually makes it very useful for me. I didn't use Spotlight that much, but I think I might start using it now in iOS 8 with spotlight suggestions. It just seems to be a better alternative to the default. Next up, we are jumping into the Photos app here, and I'm going to show you some of the editing capabilities that were added in iOS 8. So in here, we have the ability to adjust the lighting and the color on specific photos using this handy little sliding editing tool right here. And so you can slide that across to adjust the different colors. And like I said, the exposure, the shadows, the highlights, things like that. And you can also adjust them in the those defined categories right there. So if you want to get really specific with it, you do also have that option here in iOS 8 within the Photos app. So just a very handy way to kind of customize your photos and get the most out of them. As you can see, I'm just sliding things around, adjusting the colors so slightly here. So it's a pretty cool feature. And then you can save it and exit out of the Photos app. And those changes will reflect on your other devices. So coming up next, we are checking out a new feature that requires your device to be plugged in, as you can see right here, but this is what it will allow you to do. Hey Siri. So as you can see there, I pulled up Siri with a voice command and that command is Hey Siri. So basically like your OK Google Now or something like that, you can say Hey Siri. 
even from the lock screen and pull it up just like that and say your command and be on your way to doing something with Siri in iOS 8. It's a pretty handy feature, but I wish the device didn't have to be plugged in in order to use it. Now up next in the multitask switcher here, you can see that we have some little bubbles at the top and those are our recent contacts and our favorites if we swipe all the way over to the other side. And this will allow you to quickly call or message your friends and family and anybody you keep in your recent call log or your favorites in the phone app. You can quickly access those contacts right here. And as you can see, we have the ability to call somebody, message somebody, FaceTime them. We can use FaceTime audio or video and basically just quick access to your contacts, at least the ones that you use the most right here from the app switcher. So that's definitely something that I am a fan of. I kind of like it. It is a little weird having it up there at the top, but I guess it kind of balances out with the icons down there at the bottom under the app cards. Now the second to last feature we are checking out is in the notification center and Apple is allowing you to have widgets in the notification center, but if we also tap on the edit button down here, we can add or remove different elements from the today view in notification center. So that is definitely handy and this is where you'll be able to manage all of your widgets that are compatible with iOS 8's notification center when it releases later this year and developers have a chance to get on that. But for now, we have these useful features that will allow you to remove like the today summary, which I don't need for any reason. And we can just leave maybe the calendars and reminders there just to keep everything clean and tidy inside of the notification center. And of course you have the default options within the notification settings here in the settings app as we saw with iOS 7. Now one last feature I wanna show you is QuickType and that is best demonstrated within the messages app. And if we pull up a keyboard here, you can see that we have an Android style predictive text up at the top. So if if we're typing there, it will quickly pull up words that it thinks that we might want to say next or once we use it long enough, it'll actually get used to our typing patterns and our conversations and be more tailored to how you type. And of course, the more you use it, the better it gets, like I said. So this is a win-win situation and I'm happy to have it here in iOS, but it did kind of take a while. I mean, I don't see what the big deal here was. We saw a glimpse of this back in iOS 6. There was a hack to activate a keyboard like this, but it was very unstable. So now we have it two versions later in iOS 8, and hopefully it makes it through to the final cut when iOS 8 is released later this year. So this is quick type for the iOS 8 keyboard. And along with that, Apple is allowing third-party keyboards. So keep that in mind and stay tuned for that when iOS comes out in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, feel free to leave it a thumbs up as it does help out the channel a lot. And as I mentioned, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. This is Dom and have a great day.